you're probably not getting the most out of your Mac. It's the time of year when a lot of folks will be unboxing a new MacBook, iMac, Mini or Pro, and whether you're a total macOS newbie or Steve Wozniak himself, chances are these essential apps could help you out with added conveniences you might not even know you needed. So let's jump into our list of essential Mac apps to make your computer as customizable, cool and nerdy as any Windows PC. To call Almighty an app is almost a misnomer. Sure, it is an application, but it could be more accurately described as a super collection of tweaks and tiny utilities to expand the functionality of Mac computers. Almighty has way too many features to list here, and frankly, listing all those features wouldn't make for a particularly interesting video, but a few of my favorites include the keep awake function, which bypasses the usual standby timeout, can be useful if you've got a large download or upload running in a browser, which can often be interrupted by your Mac sleeping. The emoji picker picks up the slack from the old touch bar, giving you a status bar shortcut in which to search and pick your favorite smileys. You can tweak Finder to show the full path of folders and always show things like hidden files and file extensions. There's a system level color picker, a handy function to strip fonts and colors from copied text, leaving only plain text, and an instant toggle for dark mode, which somehow is something you still can't do in base Mac OS. And there's a switch to just shoot confetti across your screen, because I guess why not? You can access your favorite tweaks from the status bar shortcut, but what makes Almighty even more powerful is that it also includes keyboard shortcut functionality and automation, so you can access these capabilities in even more powerful and convenient ways. Almighty comes with a seven day trial. After that, it costs $19.99 to unlock everything in the pro version. Really, there's so much functionality packed into Almighty that we could make a whole video just on what this app can do. So it's definitely worth at least taking a look at that free trial version. AirDrop is great, but it's not ideal if you share stuff across a lot of different platforms. LocalSend is a lightweight, free and open source file sharing app that works across local networks and supports macOS, Windows, Linux, iOS and Android. More importantly, for devices on the same local network, it just works. Simply choose whether you want to send or receive and identify the other device by the cutesy fruit themed nickname it's given, then you're good to go. It won't be quite as quick as sharing between a Mac and Windows via SMB, for example, but for files up to a few gigs over a reasonably speedy Wi-Fi connection, it works great. This is a go-to app I install on every device I use, whichever OS it's running. The only caveat, of course, is that unlike AirDrop, both devices do need to be on the same local network to use LocalSend. The clue is in the name there. Apple takes a lot of flack for the lack of utility in its MacBook's display notches. Compared to the iPhone's dynamic island, it's just not that useful, aside from the fact that obviously it houses a webcam. Notch Nook is here to remedy that, turning your MacBook's notch into a multifunctional shortcut shelf. Media controls are an obvious starting point, which work pretty much just like they do in the dynamic island on the iPhone. There's also a quick mirror shortcut for checking your hair before a video call, and an additional shortcuts shelf that ties into Apple's powerful shortcuts feature. The files tray is another really handy addition that works as a sort of expanded clipboard. You can pin files here and then copy them to other locations or simply send them via AirDrop. Tray functionality is fairly basic at the moment, but it is being expanded in future versions with support for things like image compression and zip unzip. Notchnook costs $25 for a lifetime license or three bucks a month if you prefer to go the subscription route. And I think it does a great job of hanging a lantern on what many people still view as a design weakness. Stats is a free, simple, open source way to keep tabs on critical system statistics in real time across CPU, RAM, storage drives, network and more. In its standard config, it's just a more elegant way to see similar kinds of data you'd otherwise get from your Mac's activity manager. All the key figures are shown up top here, then just simply tap for a concise visual breakdown of say CPU usage, network traffic or key IO stats from your SSDs. I actually found it's especially useful to have this info up top because modern Macs are so quiet that if you do start to see the CPU or RAM go a bit screwy, it's often easier to see here. Stats is endlessly customizable in terms of how it looks, but also the info it can display. There are additional controls to show data related to GPU, Bluetooth connections, and more. It's frankly a bit shocking that an app that works this well and looks this good is still completely free to use. Tech Sniper is an essential all-in-one imaging and character recognition app. What does that mean? Well, at its core, you can use it to snip text from anything on your screen, even if it's an image or an app that doesn't directly support copying and pasting. It supports 18 languages and dumps what's recognized directly into your Mac's clipboard for easy onward pasting. 
There's a dedicated mode for recognizing QR codes and barcodes as well, in case you don't want to reach for your phone to do that. But if you do have an iPhone to hand, then TechSniper also supports connecting directly to that phone's camera to pull down text from things in the real world. And from there, copy it to your Mac's keyboard. It's one of those apps that once you start using it, you'll be amazed how much it does actually speed up certain parts of your workflow. TechSniper costs $2.99 from the Mac App Store. If you're moving to a Mac from Windows 11, one of the handy features you might be missing is Clipboard History. CopyClip is a free app that recreates this functionality on Mac OS with a few helpful extras to boot. Your most recent clipboard clippings are shown behind the menu bar icon up top, and you've of course got control over how many it remembers and displays. You can choose exceptions for sensitive apps if you don't want clippings in certain applications to be remembered, and that's pretty much it. A simple, lightweight app that's super helpful if you're the kind of person who juggles around a lot of stuff on your clipboard. Dropover is similar in function to Notchnook's files tray, though with more advanced functionality built in. It's designed to give you a temporary shelf to store files above your desktop. There are a few ways to activate it, either with a wiggle of the mouse pointer with a file selected, or using the modifier key, which by default is the shift key. Once you put some files in there, you'll see Dropover has a ton of helpful additions you can perform en masse to all the files on that shelf, including sharing to other apps or airdrop, zipping or stitching PDFs together, or batch renaming. For quick sharing to different cloud providers, you'll find support for everything from AWS to Dropbox to Google Drive and OneDrive included. And under custom actions, you can also add your own sort of mini macros, for example, resizing to a certain resolution for images or moving and copying files to a specific location. And yes, even extracting text from images as well. Meanwhile, watched folders can automatically pop up files added to a particular directory into a new shelf. That could be useful for downloads or if you're sharing over a network. And the full version of Dropover with all these features costs just $9.99. BitRot is a real thing. As you use any computer and install more apps, clutter does tend to accumulate, which can slow things down or at the very least gum up your storage. And if, like me, you cheaped out when specking out your Mac and went with the lowest possible storage configuration, you'll appreciate Pear Cleaner. It's another free open source app that can help you see not just which apps are taking up the most space in terms of the application itself, but also associated clutter in the library or various other system folders. At one point with a previous MacBook, I found over 120 gigs of gunk that had been somehow accumulated by Adobe After Effects, which could be safely cleared. So Pear Cleaner definitely would have helped me out there. In general though, this is just a really handy little app that can help you avoid that sense that you're always chipping away at that precious and often limited internal storage. And once again, free to use. So those are my essential app picks for boosting your productivity on macOS. If you're using any of these or think they'd help you out, then leave a note in the comments. And also check out our Mac Mini M4 review to see how I'm getting on with the cheapest base model of this Mac Mini, running just 256 gigs of storage. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.